Red-eared sliders, particularly when they're pets, don't slough their scutes as often as they would naturally, nor do they slough them necessarily as easily. And so you can see here, she's got a couple spots on her shell that have turned a little bit more white. There's nothing wrong. This is just that her scute on top is starting to peel away. And so it is ready to come off, but without having the ability to reach up and, and scratch her shell herself, and without necessarily having something to be able to rub up on, sometimes red-eared sliders don't actually slough off their scutes the way they're supposed to. And so, usually every year in the spring, it's always a good idea if you've got one as a pet to see if you can just start pulling off some pieces of the shell. Now, always make sure that you can see that they're turning white first. That's how you know they're ready to come off. And then you just gently peel them off if they'll come. If they don't, you leave them until they will. It doesn't hurt to pull the skews off. In fact, it just feels like exfoliating our own skin. But what you do have to be mindful of is the fact that turtles have nerve endings in their shell. If your turtle's shell is not sloughing off naturally, then it is necessary to try and get the shell off. If we don't get pieces of the shell off and if they stay on there for a very long time, it can actually harm the shell underneath. You can see here the difference in the color between this part of her scute, which has already sloughed off, and this part over here, which hasn't come off yet. You can see how much more bright and vibrant the colors are after the dead scute has lifted off versus how patchy and mottled it is and a little bit brownish white before the scute actually comes off. Captive right here slider, one of the best things to feed them are the turtle pellets that you can buy in the pet store. You've got to be careful, some of the pellets are specifically designed for young turtles that are still growing, and so since she's fully grown, those pellets are not the best composition for her, and so she does get the ones that are good for adult turtles. You can always supplement a turtle's pet food uh, diet with things like leafy greens, lettuce, kale, dandelion leaves, as well as actual protein, so I do sometimes give her shrimp, or sometimes I will go to the store and buy little feeder fish, she loves those. It also gives her an opportunity to use all of her life skills, like this, and chase after the fish and to, to find them and catch them, which is great for a captive turtle to really keep up their instincts. And sometimes she will get fruit as a bit of a treat. Fruit does have a lot of natural sugars in it, which is not the best for turtles but it is okay every now and then because in the wild, you have to think about what a turtle would actually eat. So she might come across some wild raspberries and munch on some of those, but she certainly would not go digging a carrot out of the ground. Turtles do get flipped over onto their backs very easily. And the, you know, sometimes people think that it's okay to have a turtle on their back or let's turn it over and look at the underside. The problem is with a turtle, all of their organs are inside their shell and the way their body plan is, is such that their lungs are actually on top. And so when a turtle is turned over, and I won't keep her like this for very long, but when they are turned over, all the rest of their organs are actually putting pressure on their lungs and can essentially suffocate them if they end up staying turned over for too long. So we don't want that. But that's one of the reasons why turtles have such big long necks is because when they are turned over, they push their nose into the ground and they use that to flip themselves back. A lot of people ask, can a turtle come out of its shell or can it be separated from its shell? And it cannot. And the reason is the spine of the turtle is actually fused into their shell. And the way that their shell actually evolved is that the rib cage, which you can see the remnants of the rib cage bones here, actually grew out, fused together, and then moved external to the body. And so when we see an empty turtle shell, it doesn't mean that the turtle is off somewhere else. Unfortunately, it means that the turtle has died if it's come out of its shell like that. The turtles are reptiles, and as such, their scales on their skin and their shell actually help to protect them from losing a lot of water. And so they do need to be in the water eventually, but they can actually spend quite a long time outside of the water. You can tell what kind of turtle you're looking at and how much they need to be in the water by looking at their back legs. Most of the aquatic turtles, particularly here in Canada, will have flippers on their back legs. They're more flat and compressed and wider, and these are really meant for helping them swim. Whereas a turtle that's meant to be more terrestrial or land dwelling will often have the back legs will look very, very similar to the front legs in the sense that they will have your typical leg and an ankle and then a bit of a, a hand or a foot that comes down flat. 